Hi and welcome back to my studio. Uh, in this video I want to show you about a complete transformation um, of the little print that I've been working with over the last series and um, first of all I just wanted to show you that I now have two versions sorted of this two pine print. I've got my um, kind of traditional full lino cut one here complete with its cutaway moon and thank you very much to those of you who stuck with my long colour mixing video to get the colours right for that print. Um, that was an interesting one to film and I'm really pleased that people stuck with me over that. And then I've got this kind of crazy red version and I make no apologies for its craziness because I just thought that the texture of the wood grain, fantastic, it was so much fun and I just went with it. So I have those two printed and then I did a whole program uh, about blind embossing and I'm just going to put on my blind embossing light and bring it into shot so that you can see the moon, the blind embossed moon. And I was going to do uh, that on coloured paper. I had a look for some nice soft coloured paper and I just, I couldn't find the right thing and it kind of stalled. And then I thought, well, why not, since we are now in October, make it snow? So having decided that I could use the blind emboss on a white paper if I went for a snowy scene, I then did what I always do and looked at some images. And among the images, I found this charming print uh, on the British Museum website, really excellent website. And it is called Bear on a Snow-Covered Pine Tree, and it's by Kaysai Eason, and it dates from 1840. And um, a couple of things that I really love from this, one was the way that the snow is wrapping around the pine needles, and the other thing is how the snow is falling. And if you look at this print, the snow is in clumps. It's not just da, 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 lots of dots the same size. It's, it's much more kind of organic than that. And not all the snowflakes are perfectly round. Some are really quite square. So that was kind of my takeaway from this print. So I very quickly realized that I would have to change all of the blocks to be able to get a snowy seam. So what I did was I went to the blocks I already had and I used a piece of tracing paper to offset those blocks onto a fresh piece of lino. And I have films about how to do that and I will put a link to those in the notes below. But um, I basically I printed onto this piece of tracing paper and then I rubbed the wet ink off the tracing paper onto a fresh block of lino. So what I ended up with is this block of lino with the, the printing imposed on it. And I marked out where my embossed moon is going to sit because I need to cut that out of the background. So this is the background block and this is going to make the snowy sky. And most of it's going to be cut away, but First, before I cut away the pine trees, I'm using this as my canvas to design on. So when snow is landing on um, stuff, obviously it's, it's a three-dimensional thing. So I couldn't just do a new sky and then just put a white edge on everything and it looked convincing. In fact, the snow is an enormous advantage because it make, it's, it's a way of making these pine trees even more three-dimensional. So what I did was to have a bit of a conflab with Ben because he has a really good eye for this stuff. Um, we took a print out of the line drawing and mapped out where we thought snow would lie on these pine trees. So we had a sort of rough idea of where to go with this. And then I got a white china graph. So china graph, these are sort of grease pencils that will draw on um, all sorts of things, plastic and glass. 
The one that I've got here is made by Stabilo and it's called Aquarabelle, I think. And um, it's marked up as drawing on paper, glass, plastic, metal. So these, these pens, I've got a red one and a white one. I use these a lot. And basically what I did was to take my white um, China graph and mark in where I wanted the snow, bearing in mind what I'd learned from that Japanese print about the fact that the snow does not fall in a uniform layer. It's very patchy and flurries. And then I got in and shaded where I thought the snow should fall um, so that I knew exactly where I was going. Now, when I come to cut this background block, all of this is going to get cut away anyway, but I've, I've used it to map everything out. And having shaded in the snow with my white pencil, I then went around with the red and gave myself an outline so that I had really clear shapes over the print. And then I made myself a tracing of all those clear shapes. And that's because I need, where the snow is lying on the other two blocks that map out the pine trees, I need that to be white space. I need the white of the paper to show as snow. So I need to lose those areas on those blocks. So having done that, I then went to the blocks and here is the um, here is the sort of body of the pine trees. Ignore this bit because I've already cut this bit to show you. And taking my tracing paper, I was able to map out where I thought the snow should lie, and then I coloured that in as well. So I know where I know what has to come out of this part of the lino. And I did exactly the same thing on the, let me see if I can find that block. And no, I can't. I found it, it was in the printing press. So I've got the fine line detail block and I've done exactly the same. I've taken my tracing and I've mapped out exactly where the snow is lying. So now I know that I'm going to lose the line detail, cut the line detail out of here and also cut it out of here. So that's fine, we know where the big areas of snow is. But the other thing that I liked so much about this lovely print, apart from the bear, which I really like, but there's no bear in my print, is the way that the snow is still exposing a little bit of the pine tree itself. So when it came to the lining block here, I am still going to keep a little bit of that lining block, that, that bulk colour of the tree, but I'm also going to cut away quite a lot of the pine tree here. So let me show you how my thinking process works. When I am planning this, I'm thinking about where snow would fall, where the frost would lie, the bits of the tree that are maybe a little bit protected where you would see the bare wood. So here at the end where all the detail is, I want plenty of contrast if I go back to this one, because there's something very charming about those sort of fat white hats on top of the dark pine needle. So I certainly don't want to lose the pine needle detail and I want to keep the contrast with those branches. So that can stay as is, but where the branches get fatter, it would be nice to have some uh, cutaway detail. So I've taken a green china graph and I've kind of roughed in where I think the block should stay and then I can take the rest out. So when it comes to clearing those bits out, I would use um, maybe a small V tool here. I've got one of the file tools. This is number 12. And I'd simply be going in and cutting the bare branch. So wherever I cut, it's almost like I've got 
a white pen and I am adding the snow. So here is a, a bit that's already marked and I know that's all got to come out anyway. So anything that is white with a red edge is non-negotiable, that's coming out. And anything beyond that is my choice to cut out as I go along. So here, I've, I've already worked on this branch and I've already done the same on my line block here. So I have these two cut out and I can see um, that it's the start. So what I've done is I attached a piece of newsprint over the press and did a rubbing so that I could roughly see what was going on and what was staying and what wasn't. So you can see the orange is the underblock, the lining block that's giving me the sort of bulk of the colour, and the, the red is the outline block. And it looks a bit confusing here. It's easy to kind of get lost with blocks like this. What you've got to remember is that the sky will give you the outline of the heaps of snow. So um, the top of this snow mound will be defined by the sky. But what I'm really looking for is do I have any areas where I don't like? It's obvious um, I've got it wrong and I don't like the way it looks. It'll be clearer once I've printed, but I can tell here it looks a little bit odd. I've got a kind of area here that looks a little bit odd. I can see that from the rubbing. And indeed, if I go back to the block, here's the little area. And I think I just missed finishing cutting that, to be honest. I think it's the cutting of it doesn't really make any sense to me. So I can go back in there and just do a little bit of work to make it look less like a funny old contrived shape and more like a few little bits of rough bark that are just kind of peeping out through the snow. So when I do a proof print, I'll do some more editing. So that's how I have used this uh, background block to draw on the snow, get it positioned properly, copy where the snow is positioned across to my other two blocks so that when I print this I will have a naturalistic three-dimensional layer of snow over my blocks. In the next film I want to give you a little bit of cutting uh, guidance about where and how to cut blocks like this. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you've enjoyed the film please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. If you've any questions about the process just pop them in the comments below and I'll join you in the studio again next time.